What's up guys, Tucker Singh here, SS Smithing. Today, let's make some tools. Hi guys, so, since we've kind of brought the channel back to life here, we've made an eye, we made some art, we made decorations, jewelry, all that. So, let's get back to our roots, make some tools. We're going to take some coil spring here, straighten it out like I did on this piece here. This section, uh, I'm planning on doing a whole bunch more, so instead of just using this one little bit I have for today's video, we're going to straighten this out a bit. That way we can get a fair bit out of it. And then we're going to use it to make like punches, folders, things like that. Don't want to sleep in, cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Well I'ma make hella sure that I don't become you I have no regrets, yeah, I'm tired of my chest I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt Been stabbed in the back, bed. I show you what happens Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to games, let my money show. Alrighty guys, so we got a fair bit of this through. We got, uh, what do I say, about like three foot or so uncoiled. So I'll throw in the hot cut. I'll let this cool off a little bit so I can just flip this around, throw the spring end in. And then uh, we'll just cut her off. Watch me turn this life into something that you can never own I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to gains, let my money show I've got these things that I can't let go Watch me turn this life into something that you can never own Alrighty guys, so we got our, well, down and a half, three foot section of coil spring straightened out relatively well-ish enough for us to work on some projects. So first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to clean up where we cut off there. We're going to forge this out probably into a uh, round punch for punching holes like you've seen me do in the last couple projects. So next thing we're going to do here before we uh, get to forging out our punch shape, uh, what I want to do, I'm going to straighten up the end a little bit more clean up where that cut was, round it up so that way it's a nice even while well, working piece whenever we start to draw out that taper. What we're going to do, we're going to make a round punch. So we're going to draw out a square taper. All right? I want this to be uh, a little bit, of, like, probably like 5 sixteenths, a little over a quarter inch sized round punch. So we're going to draw that out to a square taper. We're going to knock down the corners. We're going to take our time, round it up real nice, get it nice smooth, make sure the entire bar is straightened. Then we're going to take it to the hot cut, just like we did on the cut that off the parent bar. And then I'm going to taper back the end a little bit to give a nicer striking surface. Make sure everything's nice, straight, and true. Shut off the forge, and then we'll take it to the grinder, clean everything up, and then we'll move on to heat treat. Alrighty guys, so uh, we have our bar most of the way cleaned up there on the end, so now we can Alrighty guys, so here's part of the uh, trouble with using bound steels like coil springs and stuff at all, and those especially have a rough life before they get to you. And most of the time, you get them because they failed, cracked, broke, something. So, uh, as I was drawing out that taper, I found a uh, fracture starting, a crack. So I'm just going to come behind where the crack is, cut that off, and then draw it a little farther taper. So, that happens sometimes with using this stuff, so be careful with it. And, again, don't make tools out of found steels that have to go into, like, high-stress work, like under power hammers, presses, things like that, because... You never know, and you never fully know exactly what kind of material they're made out of. But for hand punches, drifts, and chisels, that kind of stuff, whereas a lot of people can get away with making them out of mild steel, this kind of stuff works. So it'll get you going.
realize I'm a human being covered in with tattoos. Alrighty guys, so that'll do it for our main taper. Now next thing we're just gonna do is knock down our corners here, take some time, round it up. Now, do not work this past the doll red or an orange. I have LED shops and it's daytime which also shines through my shop so the metal does tend to be warmer than what it looks like to my eye but either way once it gets past that orange and we're getting down into red don't hit it. Even the orange is pushing it a little bit but you can do planishing at that one. No heavy hitting. Because this is that uh, it's a higher carbon steel than mild so it's going to stress fracture and break itself apart. So. It's, I wouldn't call it a high carbon, it's more like like a medium, it's like a spring steel, so nothing crazy, but still you gotta be careful with it. Knew it from the start, you had problems with me, and the things I could be, I just wish I had seen. I feel this pain, you already know, turn that to gains, let my money show. I've got these things that I can't let go, watch me turn this life into something that you can never own. I feel this pain, you already know, turn that to gains, let my money show. I've got these Alrighty guys, so uh, we have her rounded up. Now this is one of the things, uh, you can take as much time as you want and make it as smooth and perfect as you can. Remember that old saying, uh, two minutes at the, sword, at the anvil is ten minutes of grinding, you know? So she's pretty smoothed up. Now, I'm going to need to click grind this anyway because I want you want these nice and smooth so that way it slides through the metal whenever you're drifting out a hole. So, that's good enough for me, I, everything's pretty smooth, just some light little lines across it that'll buff off in like a second on the grinder when we shine it up. And so, now, we're just gonna heat it up, I'm gonna straighten everything out a little bit here, and then I'm going to go ahead, cut off probably about that far, with the hot cut, and then we're gonna taper our order back in, cheer everything up one last time here, and then, uh, and then we'll move on to grinding before heat treat. So we got our bar cut off. Uh, we're gonna straighten up our striking end here in line with everything else. I'm gonna put a slight taper on the end of it to help direct the force straight into our tip, and then we're gonna hop on to grinding. guys so uh we have our striking end kind of tapered out there then we have our punch end here everything's pretty smooth rounded up so once this cools off i'm going to go ahead hop over to the grinder clean up our taper here make it nice smooth easy transitioning then clean up our striking end a bit Make it, I like true it up, and then round it over a little bit. We're going to have to go get back at it after we uh, heat treat it to shine everything back up. But, I don't know, pretty happy with with how it turned out. Uh, everything's relatively straight. Nothing too, too crazy off. So, no wiggles. The only bit is uh, our taper for our striking end ended up slightly off center on the very, very top. But I can clean that up on the grinder anyway. And once it gets used a few times, it's going to 
get right in line. So once this cools off too handleable, we're going to hop over the grinder and clean her up. Alright guys, so uh, we got our rough grinds all finished, we have our striking end cleaned up here, we have our punch side all cleaned up. Now, the main thing you want to do when you have one of these punches, it's not a center punch, so uh, you don't want a point, you want that to be a nice sharp shoulder here, alright, whenever you clean it up and then get it ready to use. So. I'm going to heat treat this, I'm going to harden it, we're going to do like a differential hardening, so I'm going to just quench off this end, our working end here, uh, scratch it off with a grinding wheel or something real quick, or a file just to get the gunk off, and then watch our colors run up into here, and we're not going to, and then once that happens, we're just going to cool off our striking end here a bit, and uh, we're going to leave that end soft. Some people don't heat treat any of these because they say, like, uh, it's going to get hot anyway whenever you're punching it. But I like to heat treat them anyway. Just that way, like, our midsection stay a little tougher anyway, and it doesn't bend all over the place a lot. So, uh, I'd like to do it. It's up to you, ultimately, your choice. So, we'll get this thermal cycled a couple times here, and then we'll be back right before I harden it. Alrighty. So, she's all done, all nice, hard, and tempered. Uh, took it to a bit of a golden color and started getting into purples a little ways back. Again, nothing crazy. Our end's still going to be nice and soft. Now we're just going to polish up our punch end here on the grinder real quick, clean it up. Then we'll test it out real fast. Alrighty guys, so she's all forged up here, our nice flat sharp edge here, nice round taper, so uh, even though you guys have seen it a lot of times, we're going to have to actually test this out in the video, so I'll get a piece of random something hot, then we'll punch a hole in it. Alrighty guys, as you see, she works. A nice clean hole right in through there. Very nice. Alright guys. Alright guys, so you saw her punch our hole there. Again, it will just get discolored as you do this, so the hardening, that's why people leave it as optional thing. I do it anyway just to keep things from uh, bending around and kind of keep the toughness up a little bit anyways. So, works good. Punched a nice clean hole. Or Head had didn't mushroom up at all, so no cracks, very lovely. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this. Remember, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, forge your fate.